Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first of our second round matchups here in season four of Super Mario Land 2 Six Golden Coins Randomizer League. I'm Ferran Burgundy. I'll be bringing the action to you as we have this great race between Late Learner and Typo. And it certainly should be a good one. Now, for those unfamiliar with Super Mario Land 2, the object is for our racers to defeat the evil Wario. And to do so, they'll be advancing through six different zones to collect, as the game's title indicates, six golden coins by defeating six different bosses. And those golden coins will allow access to Wario's castle for the final showdown. What do we have randomized? Well, practically everything. As the levels are shuffled, the zones with dual exits may or may not be swapped. We'll get more into that in a little bit. Also, the bosses, enemies, and power-ups are randomized. The zone's music are randomized, so you may not get the star song hype where you want it, or you may get it in places you weren't expecting it. Plus, also, the physics are shaken up, so you could potentially have normal moon physics or space physics will affect how you jump and travel. And also, whether or not a zone's level is an auto-scroller is randomized. And we are getting things started, and we have the third tree zone to get things started here. The B zone. As Late Learner looks to take a little bit of a damage boost through there, and both looking pretty neck and neck here in the early going. Taking their time, making their way through, Typo and Late Learner traversing at almost exactly the same time. Late Learner going low, Typo going high, now Typo going high and Late Learner going low. And both taking a damage boost there. Oh, carefully getting around these uh, rather large bees that are dropping down. Now, those animals are, uh, are spiked, so you definitely want to not get hit by them if you can. Now, Late Learner finding a hidden carrot, which gives him the ability to use the bunny ears. And that will allow you to kind of float along, as you see Typo doing, as he hits the goal, maybe about a second and a half ahead of Late Learner. And now we're going to see which way they go here to get things started, both heading over to the left, and we'll see what is in the first tree zone. And it is tree zone four, with the leaves. So the bunny ears being very helpful, as it allows them to kind of jump and traverse along, and avoid most of the pratfalls, but Late Learner, oh, not quite high enough, having to wait for that next platform, and that's going to give him a little bit of a, a disadvantage here, as Typo, meanwhile, heads into the first of our split-level zones. Now, the way that the split-level zones work is there are two different exits that appear in those particular zones' levels, and one leads to a secret area, which, in this case, our runners do not want, and the other leads to advancing further into the level. And in this case, the one that advances further is what our runners are looking to use because, well, they want to get through the level as quickly as possible. Now, this here is the Macro Zone 1, and this one, in order to get to that secret exit, you need the Fire Flower. And, oh, Typo with a little bit of, I guess, a well-timed uh, uh, scrolling. Screen scroll, I suppose, as Late Learner uses the Fire Flower and heads up to the top. And we'll see if that is the correct exit. And it is. So they definitely want to use the secret here as Late Learner now going to head into Pumpkin Zone 1, looks to be Tree Zone 3 this time around. And Typo heading up as well, so Late Learner getting a bit of a lead. Able to regain what was that brief deficit there. Now you saw Late Learner hitting that bell along the way there. That is the midpoint bell, which if one of our runners takes a death and they hit that bell, that midpoint is where they will start the level. They don't have to start all the way from the beginning. So now both opting to take the same direction. As Late Learner finishes and now heads up to Tree Zone 5, which 
is in its vanilla location, but what is randomized is that it's an auto-scroller. This is normally not an auto-scrolling board, and, well, auto-scrolls are not exactly fun. Mainly because you're forced to wait. When it comes to a speed run or a race, auto scrolls are things that you want to avoid as much as possible. But with this being one of the boss levels, there's no way of getting around it. Now, Slash, the creator of the game, noting in chat that as far as the league records, uh, Late Learner is 8-4 and four overall, while Typo is 2-5-1. and one. But Typo's average time, just under 41 minutes, whereas Late Learner's average time, 41.21. So about a 31-second differential as far as their average time. So something tells me that this is going to be back and forth and very close all the way through. So both of our runners now with the Fire Flower as they make their way through the auto-scrolling Tree Zone 5. While they're making their way through, seems like a good time as any to let you know about some of the other events that we have going on here among the Randomania networks, including later tonight at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, the Final Fantasy Randomizer Spring Tournament continues. Also, tomorrow night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern here on the Randomania networks, the Final Fantasy IV Free Enterprise Weekly Race. And then on Wednesday nights at 9, there's the Dragon Warrior Randomizer Weekly Race. Just a few of the fun things that we have going on here among the Randomania networks. Now, Late Learner had uh, quickly, as there was a bit of a visual glitch there, taking care of the sewer rat and has the first coin already here and is quickly into the hippo zone. And Typo also pretty much roasting the rat in a very quick fashion. So 6.35, the first coin for a typo. Late learner still with the lead, though. So now this is another one of the split levels. This is Pumpkin Zone 3. And Late Learner going to take the lower exit, as you need the ears to be able to go to the secret exit. And it's, uh, it's the one that he's looking for. So he heads up to Space Zone. So if you're Typo here, you don't want the bunny ears, and perhaps taking that little bit of a damage boost, potentially a little bit helpful for him, as Late Learner, meanwhile, floating along in the bubble. And at the end of this level, it's also going to be split. There are two different exits, one high, one low. The high one able to be reached by the bubble, and that's what Late Learner takes, and that is the correct one as well. So, so far, great decisions on both of our runners' parts. Late Learner three for three in those seven split zone decisions. We'll see how Typo does as Late Learner is now in the Space Zone final level, which this time around is the Turtle Zone 3. The inside of the whale. Oh, Late Learner trying to duck underneath that bonefish, but not quite able to do so and loses his firepower as a result. And Typo, meanwhile, having to go low in the Hippo Zone, losing that bubble. As Late Learner utilizes an Invincibility Star, and Typo's going to go low and not be too thrilled with the result. As we have Tatanga at the end of the Space Zone here. Meanwhile, a quick soft reset for Typo as he got to Turtle Zone 1 and realized that he didn't want to go there. So back through 
this hippo level he goes as late learner working on the second boss Tatanga, the boss of the space zone and takes him out so that is going to be golden coin number two here for late learner at nine minutes and 18 seconds now you see that it fell into the turtle zone spot but that's due to a glitch as if you look maybe about a frame or two before it changes over it moves into its proper spot but it bases it off of the zone that you are completing not necessarily the boss that you're challenging as late learner heads into now the fourth of these split level zones this being tree zone two in this case for the first macro zone level so about a level behind is Typo, but plenty of room to catch up as an incorrect decision in those split zones, as well as a potential death, can certainly swing things around and can eliminate a lead. It can certainly further a lead as well, depending on how it goes. And Late Learner picking up a 1-up. And finding a hidden invincibility star. That's going to help him get to the boss. You don't get to carry it over to the boss. So now Typo working on Tatanga. As Late Learner is going to float up and is going to head to the secret exit. And that's not the ideal one. What they're looking for there is to ideally get to the secret exit in the macro zone so that way they can essentially have one less zone level to do as Typo dispatches of Tatanga and is now going to get coin number two here at 11.07. So about a minute and 49 second differential between our two runners getting the second gold coin. So we shall see, as now heading into Macro Zone, if Typo goes for the standard exit, if that will be a way for him to even up things here. Late Learner, meanwhile, hitting that bell right at the end of the zone and allowing him to access a bonus game to get a potential power-up, and he does so, getting the carrot, and he's got the bunny ears once again. As he now makes his way over to the third macro zone level, which this time around is the level that you would normally see at the very beginning of the game, the starting level. As Typo now hits the midpoint bell and takes an immediate death to be able to start from there. So back in he goes. Is Typo going to go secret level or is he going to go regular? We'll find out shortly as Late Learner flying and floating over most of this start level, hits the midpoint bell. Now Typo getting the ears. And is heading low, and Late Learner taking a little bit of damage there near the end. Oh, and Typo is going to take that upper exit and is not going to be too thrilled about it, as Late Learner makes his way to the final macro zone board and we've got star song action here in mario zone one uh, late learner twisting into an invincibility star hits the midpoint bell as does Typo on his side. Very nice traversing to balance in between the two enemies. And just like that, on to boss number three, which is the Octopus. So, Late Learner using the fireballs to make quick calamari of the Octopus. And is going to get coin number three here at 1353. And 
typo now. Oof, dodging a Goomba there and is trying to float over most of the level as Late Learner, now with coin three, is going to head over to the Pumpkin Zone. Two different split levels here as well. And we're going to be starting things off with Tree Zone 1. So trying to avoid the frogs and bees and other enemies there as Typo floating through and takes care of that starting level and is going to head on over to the macro boss zone, which this time around is Mario 4. So, Late Learner with about a level and a half lead at the moment. But all it takes is one mistimed jump, and that can certainly even things back out as now we head into the next split area, which is Pumpkin Zone 2 in its vanilla location. Second time we've seen that here in this seed. Typo hovering over, and now Typo gets to take care of the boss. Only not with the Fire Flower, so it's going to be a little bit uh, more challenging. Late Learner taking a death in Pumpkin Zone 2. But it looks like he was at that midpoint, so that's right where he starts as Typo takes care of the Octopus and is going to get coin number three, the Macro Zone coin here at 15 minutes and 51 seconds. So the lead growing ever so slightly for Late Learner. It's now a one minute and 58 second differential between acquiring the third coin. As Late Learner using the Invincibility Star is gonna head down to the secret exit. We will see if that is ideal or not. The spin jump here drops a little further down, and there is the secret exit. And that is not ideal. So that's going to send him out to the Pumpkin Zone secret, which looks to be Mario 3. And he quickly does a soft reset, and is going to have to go back through that Pumpkin Zone 2 to take the traditional exit. So this opens the door here for Typo to get back into this. And just like that is on the same level, although he doesn't have the information the Late Learner has. So this is a crucial moment here in the race. If Typo able, is able to take the standard exit, That'll just about even things up and make up that almost two-minute deficit right here. As we see Late Learner using that fireball, but not able to kill fire with fire, apparently. And now takes that traditional exit, so Late Learner is going to move on to the next split level, which is... Oh, it is Space Zone 1, and it looks to have Moon Physics. And it looks like Typo is going to take the regular exit, so this is going to save him a bunch of time here. He's going to be very thrilled with that. So now we get to see here, as this is also a split zone level. This is the sixth of the seven in this game. Now the secret exit, you have to go rather high to get to here as it takes some rather timely jumps. And Late Learner finding another hidden block here to try to access that high road. As you see with the moon physics, it takes a little bit longer to jump, and you don't really have as much mobility. Almost as if you were on the moon. So 
The uh, late learner is going to take that upper exit, the secret exit. Looks like not, uh, Typo not too far behind. And that is not the ideal one. So Typo hoping to slip here, although he doesn't realize it yet. And late learner opting to keep the power up and go through that secret board as it is the space zone secret which happens to have moon physics as well. Now, will Typo do the same? It looks as though he will. He's going to drop on down. So now the lead cut considerably shorter here for late learners. Now he's going to have to go back into the space zone one to take that traditional exit. So the lead cut down to maybe about... 20 to 25 seconds at this point. As we have crossed the 20 minute threshold of this race, late learner with a lead, but it is an ever so slight one. So now any particular trouble here in space zone one, and that will definitely shift things in or out of somebody's favor. Right now, Late Learner with the lead, but not much of one as he makes a nice moon leap over some spikes, and Typo also hitting the midpoint bell in Space Zone 1. So Late Learner is now going to advance up to the final Pumpkin Zone board, which is Pumpkin Zone 4 in its vanilla location. Well, if nothing else, they're expecting it to be randomized, so the fact that they weren't expecting it to be in its vanilla location, that's where it's random in a sense. So both making their way through the fourth boss zone. Pumpkin Zone 4 in its vanilla location. Late Learner with about a 20 to 25 second lead as he now comes in, and we have the Witch in her vanilla location. Well, the odds are certainly there for it, as you don't know what you're going to necessarily have, as now Late Learner going left, going left again, and going to the right, three stomps on the Witch, and that's going to take care of her here just as Typo enters the Battle with the Witch. So here at 22 minutes and 3 seconds is coin number 4 for Late Learner. Meanwhile, Typo not too far behind. He's finishing off the Witch now. As Late Learner heads into the Mario Zone. Now, no... No split levels or anything here in Mario Zone. It's just four straight levels as here at 22-26, Typo gets coin number four. So, as I said, that lead only cut down to 23 seconds. And, oh, look at this. The first Mario Zone is Mario Zone 2, and we have an auto-scroller with space physics. So the good news is our runners have a chance to kind of float along. The not quite as good news, though, is that, well, it's auto-scrolling, so you have to wait. You can't control your own fate as far as speeding this particular zone along. And this isn't exactly one of the shortest zones to have an auto-scroller. And don't forget, if you like what you're seeing here and want to check out the game for yourself, I just put the link in the chat here on the Randomania Network on Twitch. And that way you can download the game for yourself, and as well as, or at least the randomizer part of it. And you can also check out Info in the League and join the Discord to interact and get some tips and tricks and perhaps even challenge some of these folks yourself in some informal races. So that's all there, the uh, the Discord as well as information on the League, 
and the randomizer program itself created by Slash Infinity. So, late learner now utilizing an invincibility star and can't really charge ahead, unfortunately, as the auto scroller limits him there. So, late learner finally to the goal and is going to head on to the second Mario zone, which is Tree Secret Zone. Got some blocks and coins as you make your way along the level. That spells out Wario Land 2, so using that, you can kind of figure out how far along in the level a runner is. As Typo now getting through the auto-scroller, and uh, Late Learner was hoping, possibly, for a set of bunny ears to be able to float over that long section of spikes, but unable to do so, picks up a carrot at the end, and meanwhile, we have more Star Song action. Typo perhaps looking for a secret, and looks like we've got the Invincibility Star. Meanwhile, Late Learner in the third Mario Zone, which is Turtle Secret, and he is just floating right over top of most of it. Oh, but Typo running into an issue here, being unable to get underneath the blocks. Having lost the Fire Flower, so he's going to have to take a death here. And that gives Late Learner a bit more of a lead as he now heads into the final Mario Zone. And we have Space Zone 2 with the Space Physics. And Typo's just going to skip it, come on back, and head on over to Turtle Zone, which looks to be the Mole, the miscellaneous overworld level. And it's also an auto-scroller. So, at least a trifecta of auto-scrollers here. As Typo now picking up the fire flower that he was looking for and is hoping to hang on to it here. And maybe he'll go back or maybe he'll keep going with Turtle Zone. It's hard to say. And speaking of Turtle Zone, by process of elimination, the last of our split zone levels is Turtle Zone 2, the submarine, and it's in its vanilla location by process of elimination. So Late Learner now opting to pick up a Fire Flower. And just floating over top. Meanwhile, we got the Invincibility Star, and that is going to take care of it, and he's going to... Keep on going through Turtle Zone. So here we go. Let's see which of the exits is the ideal one, the one that's going to move them on to the Turtle Boss Zone. Well, Typo is going to swim up and try to go for the gauntlet, as it's known, the series of enemies that you have to swim through and pass to be able to get to the secret exit. And so far we've got a bullet bill, we got some sharks. A little on the tricky side here, and just getting underneath the hitbox of that bullet bill is Typo. Sliding underneath there, another bonefish, and meanwhile Late Learner is on the fifth boss, and it looks to be the Mama Bird. And let's see about this secret exit. It is the correct one! So Late Learner is going to take care of coin number five. Meanwhile, Mario Zone, or Macro Zone 4, I should say, it's an auto-scroller. At 2821, Late Learner getting coin number five. And now Late Learner just a few levels away here, so... Now Late Learner gets to deal with the auto-scroller. So 
Now with both of our runners making their way through the different auto scroll levels here, uh, Shaolin asking in chat if the, uh, the, the if the game is randomized. This most certainly is. While there are a couple of items in their vanilla location, it's something that in a randomizer you wouldn't expect. So that is where the randomness comes into play. So typo with an invincible. Ability star not quite able to utilize it to the full potential by sprinting through, but is able to float along. Oh, but hugged the right side and lost the bunny ears thanks to that paragoomba. And we'll see if that creates any issues here heading into this battle with these three little pigs. As Late Learner has made his way through the mole auto scroller and is now on Turtle Zone 2. So there goes one pig, the straw pig. Typo taking care of the stick pig. As Late Learner takes that small damage boost to head on through to the gauntlet. And Typo is going to take out the three little pigs and he's going to get star or coin number five. I'll be here at 30 minutes and 34 seconds. So now back to an over two, or now to an over two minute differential, two minutes and 13 seconds between when they got their respective fifth coins. And Typo gonna head back into the Mario zone. And he's just gonna go with the small Mario strats. have the star song action going on and a very well-timed fire flower but he's got to take the damage boost and he's gonna grab the one up and opt for the fire flower to keep on going so now on to mario zone three is typo and it is the turtle secret zone Ooh, tried to jump up and took a, a double damage boost. Now he's down to small Mario. So the good news is this is a fairly short level by, uh, by comparison. Not quite so good news as Late Learner heading through his final zones level. For the Turtle Zone, it is Macro Zone 4. But once Typo gets to the last Mario zone, he'll have an auto-scroller as well in the Space Zone. Space Zone 2. So now a pair of auto-scrollers and no Star Song in space. But now we have Late Learner going to take on and ideally take out the three little pigs. So there's the straw pig. There's three hops on the stick pig and here comes the brick pig. Ooh, a little bit of a dangerous floating there as Late Learner hovering overhead and that's going to take care of the three little pigs. And that is going to get Late Learner coin number six. So he'll be the first to access Wario's castle as he gets coin six at 33 minutes and 10 seconds. Late Learner not going to bother trying to get any kind of power up. So I don't think we're going to see the separate game area, all affectionately known as the Showcase Showdown Wheel. And here at 3343, we've got Wario's Castle with normal physics. So a little bit of a... 
Ooh, wow, just avoiding the hitbox there is Late Learner, and he makes his way through that first section of the gauntlet. As Typo is at the halfway point. Now, Late Learner also in a very good position here as far as the enemy kills. As you see there in the lower part of the screen, just next to the counting down time, you see that there are 99 enemy kills. Now, once you get 100 enemy kills, not including bosses, you get an automatic invincibility star as Typo roasting Mama Bird, and that is going to be coin number six for Typo. Here at 34.53. So trimming the lead down to about a minute and 43 seconds, but will it be too little too late? As Late Learner hovers over top of those tricky platforms. And there is kill number 100. So that gives him the Invincibility Star, as at 35.27, it becomes Typo to Wario's Castle. And here's Late Learner with the Showdown with Wario. And Slash noting in chat that this might be a League personal best for Late Learner. But he still has two incarnations of Wario to get through. Taking a damage boost there, perhaps intentional. Oh, but he gets hit by the light fixture, and now is Small Mario. Oh, a very timely Fire Flower, and oh, a death. A death for Typo, so that's going to set him a little bit further back here. As Slash noting that 3744 is... The personal best for Late Learner, but that is going to be Eclipse and then some. Get out your GGs and chat for Late Learner, who is going to take this race with an official SRL time of 36 minutes and 25 seconds. That is one minute and 19 seconds ahead of his personal best here in league competition. It sounds like we have our Victor Late Learner here in chat. Great game. Thanks. It was, uh, it was, uh, I think it was quite easy to start, that one. Felt like it. The seed, by the way, not the race. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> definitely, uh, def definitely a, an interesting seed in that regard. Uh, things were pretty close throughout the first two thirds of the race. Uh, what has typo? Uh, what had typo fall a little bit behind uh, was in the turtle secret zone, uh, or I'm sorry tree secret zone he had to double back as he needed a fire flower to get through those blocks uh, okay. uh, so he ended up doubling back and instead just went to turtle zone completed that as the fifth coin and then doubled back to mario zone to complete that as the sixth coin as he is making his way toward wario as we speak well, he's done quite well considering he's in mario's castle like and he has to go back so many times yeah, no, it was, as I said, it was pretty close. Uh, for the most part, your lead had fluctuated between 30 seconds and about two minutes, depending on where along the way it was. Uh, it was probably about 30, a little more than 30 seconds after the tree zone, then it expanded to about uh, almost two minutes after the space zone, but then uh, stuck that way uh, after macro zone. Both, uh, I was going to say, it looks like your choices were just 
actually, it looks like it was pretty even across the board. Both of you were four out of seven on the ideal choices. Oh, nice. Yeah, the only things differing in terms of choices was in the hippo zone. Uh, typo went high as typo now finishing up here. So get out your GGs for Typo, who's going to finish just under the 39-minute mark with an official SRL time of 38 minutes and 59 seconds. Yeah, I think I was uh, I was quite lucky with the power-ups I had at the, when they, uh, the levels came. The secret level. Hello. We have Typo here in chat as well. Typo, GG. Thank you. So uh, to tell us what was uh, what was going on with the uh, with the tree secret zone that caused you to have to divert your route and go over to the uh, to the turtle zone and come back to it. Uh, actually, th that was just a bad decision because I was kind of thinking that the last power up wouldn't be advantage wouldn't be advantageous to me, but it ended up being a flower anyway. So I went there and then I went back, and that probably cost me a lot of time. It's something I shouldn't have done, basically. Well, it was it was pretty close up to that point. I mean, when both of you had acquired the fourth coin, it was only about a twenty three second differential between the yeah. two. Yeah, I mean, I figured he was probably ahead because he wasn't yelling about anything, and we were both on the Discord. Um, so uh, that was my cue to think, okay, well, maybe if I just you know make some decisions that may be advantageous to me it'll work out but it it didn't that power up was a fire flower if it was something like money bags then maybe ross would have had the gun to go back and get a power up somewhere else but unfortunately didn't work out for me huh. cool boy. yeah well sometimes uh, especially when you know that you have a, a talented runner like late learner or ross is uh, you know kind of uh, breaking the fourth wall a little bit on that but uh when you have a when you have a, a challenger of that caliber, sometimes you have to take some calculated risks. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, I'm not sure how well calculated it was. Um, I'm sure someone who knows the game really well might yell at me for making a statistical decision like that. Um, Deer might have been screaming at me when he saw me do that, but. Uh, I, did, what, did you hear him at some point? Because uh, yeah, that that is exactly what had occurred. Oh, dear, oh, okay. I to say and chat about it. All right. Yeah, that's fine, though. <laughs> not to call anybody out, but if you watch the restream later, you'll be able to see it, so it's not like I'm spoiling anything. Of course, of course. Whenever I do anything wrong, you just, every time, every single time, Beast in chat just says, Ross, please, every single time. <laughs> yes, in this case, there was a typo, please. <laughs> yes. Um, but besides that, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I kind of screwed up at the beginning and then I had that, um, what was it? It was macro zone one where I actually got a power up and hit the side of the wall and warped through the, like the majority of the level, uh, above the level, which was interesting. Yeah. There was that, uh, that kind of, that, that kind of, uh, clip, I guess, or, uh, or I, I'm not even sure what exactly to call it. Yeah, I guess, I guess you can do that while Mario is in the power-up animation. You can kind of clip through a wall like that. That's kind of weird. But I mean, it, it didn't it didn't really take off, it, take off too much time or anything, and uh, I mean, it still allowed you to to get to where you needed to go. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't too bad. It was just um, I was kind of laughing at it for a bit. Um, but yeah, it didn't it didn't really detract from the run at all. Um, there were just a few things I did before that, actually, that kind of wasted some of my time. Um, and that was just uh, a separator as to the mistakes I made and then the run kind of, uh, I don't know, kind of like smoothed out for a bit until I made a few more mistakes again at the end that allowed Ross to, uh, to catch up or to get right way ahead of me, I should say. Yeah, I mean, as far as the as far as the split decisions, it looks like it was four apiece for both of you. Uh, the only differential being uh, the hippo zone where uh, typo went high and uh, and late learner went low, 
and uh, the Pumpkin Zone 2, which uh, was one of four different uh, four different boards in their vanilla locations, which led to an is this even randomized chat in uh, or comments in chat. <laughs> Uh, but in that one, the uh, yeah, the normal exit was the uh, the correct one. That was uh, that was where Typo made a correct decision. That's what allowed him to capitalize and close in on that lead, which was a little under two minutes after Macro Zone, and uh, and closed it to within twenty three seconds after defeating the uh, defeating the witch. Alrighty. So, uh, any other any other thoughts about the seed here before we wrap things up here for this uh, for this particular broadcast? Uh, not really for me. I think it was a pretty simple seed overall. Nothing too unexpected. Uh, a lot of auto scrollers, but nothing apart from uh, tree final, uh, tree boss level uh, auto scroller. That was the scary one. But yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then just for just for an added bit of fun, uh, two out of the three boards in Turtle being auto scrollers, the uh, the mole to start things off, and then you had the gauntlet of uh, of, of the submarine in its vanilla location, and then Macro Zone Four being uh, <laughs> being an auto scroller as well. Yeah, that was interesting. Alrighty, well, that looks like it's going to just about do it here. Make sure to give both of our runners a follow, Late Learner, and you can see it there as twitch.tv slash not underscore typo. Uh, as well as behind the scenes, I want to thank Nori Astra for doing both the restreaming as well as the tracking. And you can give me a follow as well. I'm Ferran Burgundy, and also in chat there is the link to the randomizer itself, information about the league, as well as the Discord. Uh, where you can converse with such fine folks as the ones here uh, who race here today. Uh, also, take a look at the upcoming schedule of events. You can see that at randomania.net slash calendar. And most notably, coming up a little bit later tonight, uh, a little over three and a half hours from now, is another of the Final Fantasy Randomizer Spring Tournament races. Also, tomorrow night at 9.30 is the Final Fantasy IV Free Enterprise Weekly Race. Those are certainly a good time, as always, there. And then a Legend of Zelda Randomizer Battle Royale. That's going to be coming up tomorrow night at 11 p.m. Eastern. So that's a nice late one there for those, uh, those I guess, out further west can certainly enjoy that, as opposed to us here in the east or those... Uh, across the uh, the pond over in Europe there. And on Wednesday at 9 o'clock Eastern, we have Dragon Warrior Randomizers uh, weekly race, the Wednesday Warrior Weekly. Uh, a lot more events that are usually in tow, things a uh, little bit lighter on the schedule as, uh, as we head into the holiday. And then, of course, uh, there's also that other big uh, fundraising event going on here. I think you all know what that is. But... Uh, Nonetheless, a lot of things going on here among the Rando Mania Network, so definitely want to check that out. So for our runners here, as well as Nori Aster behind the scenes, I'm Ferran Burgundy saying until next time, may your stars sing brightly and your seeds stay classy. Good day, everyone. <laughs>